Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to video two in my Joshua Bardwell Race Day Quads F7 build. This is video two and video one. We did a overview of the build and a lot of the components that I'm going to be using. And in video two, we're going to get started on the frame. Now, I've never built this frame before, so uh, join me and we'll see if I can get it done. As I mentioned in video number one, I don't claim to be an expert in any of this stuff. Just like the people who watch my videos trying to figure things out, I like to do all the due diligence up front and then gather all the information from all the different sources to figure out how to do stuff. Compile it into one video series so that uh, it makes it much easier for people who come after me. That's my goal. Hopefully, I'll be successful. But without further ado, let's get started on this frame. All right, so while I'm diving into this box, uh, it's important for me to also mention to you that uh, I bought all this stuff with my own money. I'm not sponsored by anybody, so uh, uh, there's going to be no favoritism or anything like that. I'm going to call it like I see it, and uh, we'll just go from there. I am going to take a couple of minutes and get to know the directions and count to make sure I've got all of my parts. All right, here we are. I've got everything relatively neatly laid out and I'm ready to move on, but wanted to share something with you as I took a look at the directions and I took a closer look at the box. It got me thinking. Take a look at this. This is from the online marketing where I made the decision to purchase this particular frame. Check this out. Take a look at this picture right here. This is the flight controller stacked on top of a four in one ESC and it looks exactly the way it would look if this thing were right side up, but check it out. If we move from this image to this image, everything gets flipped upside down. Now that's going to have some implications on how things are set up in beta flight. I'm just going to install it this way and I'm going to make my top plate, my bottom plate and my bottom plate, my top plate. And I'm just going to run with it because that will work. And it doesn't add any unnecessary level of complexity, which would make this thing so confusing that it might cause some beginners to just, throw their arms up in the air and, and quit. All right. So looking at the directions, I am going to start with the bottom plate and work my way up. All right. So at this point, you'll notice that I put some heat shrink on the arms so that my uh, motor wires can get tucked underneath them. Uh, if you don't do it now, uh, you'll never get another chance. Okay, so with the motors on, we are getting scarily close to the part that I hate the most, which is the soldering. Okay, so I am painfully aware of how bad my soldering skills are. And that is actually why I do the power leads first, because the wires are the thickest gauge. And to me, at least, this is the hardest part of the whole thing to solder. So. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and pre tin all of the pads and start soldering the 12 pads for all four motors. And we want to make sure that we put this thing on with the arrow pointing to the front of the craft. Okay, so when it comes to all-in-one ESCs, you're going to want to look at the pinout diagrams for both the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight control board just to make absolutely sure that everything lines up the way you think they should. Now, normally when you buy things as a stack or as a kit, it should be fine, as in the case of this one here, but I still double-checked to see what the pinouts were. Okay, so this is the pinout diagram for the two pieces that I'm using right here. Here is the iFlight and here is the flight controller. 
This information can easily be obtained by the individual instructions for each uh, piece. And as you look at them, you see one of them's reversed, uh, but ground goes to ground. Next in line is VBAT, then the four motors, then current, and then uh, R4. So you're always going to want to check that, but uh, if you take a look at the uh, packages here, you'll see that both the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller both came with an abundance of options in the event that uh, we didn't have a direct 1-to-1 -one -one match. All right, so we've got our flight controller connected to our 4-in-1 ESC, which is also acting as our power distribution board. As we test for short circuits, uh, the, what we're looking for is... A beep like that, and of course that's what we don't want to hear. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and put the uh, leads to uh, where the battery normally goes and see if there's a short. And we're good to go. All right, so what we have here is a smoke stopper, and essentially what that will do is uh, help protect our flight board uh, and other electronics in the event that we do have a short someplace. Uh, without a smoke stopper, if you plug the battery straight in and you've got a short, uh, you could damage your flight controller. So without a smoke stopper, it's always a crapshoot as to whether or not you're going to see smoke or not. But with the smoke stopper, you get peace of mind. So here, plugging it in, everything seems to be fine. All right, so this is the receiver that goes on the quad. It's the FR Sky RXSR, and this is what receives the inputs from the radio that you're controlling in your hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug him in, like so. All right, so we're going to get the diagram out and get the wires in order. All right, so here is our ground is black, our 5 volts is red, our S port is yellow, and our S bus out is green. Okay, so one of the things that I kind of anticipated in this build was good documentation. Uh, Joshua Bardwell, I believe, wrote all of the documentation for the Kakute F7 uh, all-in-one build that I did, and th those directions were spot on. I mean, it was very, very easy to follow them. So I was anticipating that they would be equally as good here. And he didn't disappoint. There are wiring diagrams for just about every possibility that you can think of here, including the easiest one of all, which is the way we're doing things. I think the harder decision to make is figuring out exactly where we're going to put the receiver on the frame. So here is where I'm doing the test fitting. Uh, I've got two things to keep in mind here. I've got to make sure I've got a spot and the correct wire length for both my, uh, my radio receiver and my camera transmitter, which is most likely going to end up going right here. You also want to be cognizant of where you put things because you want to make sure that you can easily access the things that you need to access later. Uh, for example, the uh, camera transmitter has got a button on the side of it for changing bands and changing channels and that sort of thing. We want to make sure that we can access that after the whole thing is put together and wired up. All right, so it's been 24 hours. I am at the next day, and uh, when I went back and I reviewed the footage, it came off as too messy for you to really get the full benefit of what I hope to accomplish here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to abandon this, and I am going to go to paper. And uh, I want to do all the wiring on paper. All this wiring is done. It's tested. It works. It flies. It's pretty awesome but it's ugly. So let's go to a clean slate and uh, let's take a look at the wiring there. Well, now that you've seen my wiring mess, you probably can understand my dilemma as to why I'm trashing most of uh, the video that I shot yesterday. Um, but let's go ahead and do this, hopefully in a way that makes the most sense. What we're going to do is we're going to do this in three steps. We're going to do our FR Sky receiver, which is here. And we're going to do our camera, and then we're going to come over here and we're going to do our VTX, our video transmitter. All right, so let's do the ground wire from the FR Sky to the flight control board. And that's simply ground to ground, just like so. All right, next, we've got a 5 volt, and we're going to just take our 5 volt 
and we're going to put it right here to five volts. Okay, so if you recall from earlier in the video, our S port is the yellow wire, and we're going to take him and we're going to go to T2 right here. And our S bus is our green wire, which we're going to take to R1. Just like that. All right, next, let's do our camera. And there's only three wires we need to worry about here. A red, a black, and a yellow. So the red one is going to come off of 5 volts. And we're just going to go straight to this 5 volt 5 volt pad right here. Next is our ground. Not too tough. We're just going to go right to this ground right here. And because this is our camera and it's supplying the video, that would be video in, we're going to take this video right here and we're going to go straight to video in just like that. Boom. We are two thirds of the way done. All right. So now we're going to do the VTX, which is the video transmitter. And we're going to start right up here with the, it says seven to 24 volts. So we could actually feasibly go to nine volts if we wanted to, or we could go to battery. I'm going to take it to battery. like so. The next one is easy. It's ground and it's just going to go to ground. Just like so. And then our next one is our video, which is our yellow wire. And it is going to go to this pad right here, which is labeled the VO for video out. There's that. And we're fortunate because this particular uh, video transmitter has smart audio and we're going to take our smart audio from here. And what's the best way to do this? Well, right like that to T5. So if your video transmitter has smart audio, audio, definitely hook it up, hook up this green wire. And what you can do is you can set your channel, you can set your band and you can set your power right in beta flight, which basically keeps you from having to guess, uh, pressing the little button and trying to interpret all the little lights on the transmitter. So highly recommend you hook that up. So we're looking at this now and I'm wondering if it's any clearer than, uh, it's gotta be clearer than my actual wiring. And my goal here was to put it all in one place for you. All right. I hope my impromptu wiring diagram was helpful in giving you a big picture of all the wire stuff that you have to do. But if you're still a little unclear on it, do not fret uh, because these guys are pros and they have done such a great job with the documentation. You really can't go wrong. And although I only gave you one example, they give you example after example, trying to cover the widest spectrum of devices that you could be using with this particular flight controller, covering various VTXs, etc 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 so uh, this is a magnificent resource and i'm pretty confident that between the video and this manual you will have all the tools at your disposal to be able to get this thing wired up correctly the first time all right so that pretty much wraps it up for the wiring of this thing remember before you plug in your battery to conduct continuity tests and use your smoke stopper you do not want to have gone through all of the trouble of wiring all this stuff and then have something go poof on you. So by all means, get a smoke stopper, make a smoke stopper, buy a smoke stopper. It's an insurance policy that you really can't go wrong on. Okay, so it's a good stopping point for this video. We are going to check, double check, and triple check our wiring. I'm going to do that offline. And then we are going to be ready to go into beta flight and start configuring everything. 
And uh, before you know it, we're going to be out there flying. So I'm Steve signing off for this video. I'll see you in the next one.